And hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday Night's After Show. It's so good to be with you on this Friday night. Hi, Greg Oliar. How are you? Hi, Zev. How's it going? Pretty good. We're the warm-up act tonight. We're waiting for LB uh, to join <laughs> us in just a few minutes. She's having some computer problems. So she'll be joining us in just a few minutes. We have really an interesting show tonight because those Kremlin papers were revealed by The Guardian last night. And we'll talk a lot about what that means and and why so many people were were rushing to the rushing to discredit it even before we any of Not us had rushing. seen it. Rod they rushing. were Russian. They, they were, were Russian. Russian. They were Russian. <laughs> it's right there. It's right there. So. It's so easy. It was such a good one. Yeah, you're right. Let me see. I, I see LB might be here. Let me see. No, is she ready? Let me see. Hi. Are you there, LB? I'm here. You're here. We is can my hear you. Oh, good. Better? Yeah, much better. Yes. We can hear you. Uh, Sound great. So it's great to yeah. have you here. You've been away for a couple of weeks. Yeah. We'll explain all of that a little later on. But we've got a lot of interesting news to talk about tonight. But it's good to see you again. So welcome back. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. We should talk about the Kremlin Papers first. I was going to talk about, while I had just Greg here, I was going to mention how brilliant his podcast was today. Again, because I just spend so much time every Friday morning just engrossed in it. This was really interesting. I'd uh, not heard Kirby's... Thanks, Summers talk about her book or talk about her experiences before regarding Ghislaine Maxwell and Robert Maxwell and Epstein. She's, I think she's actually written something that's useful compared to a lot of the other junk that's out there that is not so useful on, on, on Ghislaine Maxwell. I feel like she's really revealed some of the stuff that's hard to, that's hard for the mainstream media to get at. There's some interesting stories in there for sure. There's definitely yeah. a lot of things that I didn't know. And her book, this new book, it's just the first 30 years of her life. So it's not about the Epstein stuff really at all. It's, it's almost the, the precursor to that. Ah, okay. So a lot of it is about Robert Maxwell, who we'll talk about later. A lot of the podcast was about Robert Maxwell, too. So yeah. I think he's really, really interesting. Thank after you. the after I listened to the podcast, I, I went through all my files, or through all my Maxwell files, and dug up some things that I had not shared before. And uh, we'll share them a little bit later on in the show. So I'm excited be really for fun. this. Yeah, it'll right. be a good time. Cue this uh, up, guys. It'll yeah. be good. But let's talk about the Kremlin Papers first. There they were in the Guardian newspaper, huge exclusive yesterday. Luke Harding's very good reporting, having received these secret documents from an unknown source, which seemed to detail exactly how Vladimir Putin ordered his National Security Council to get Trump elected in great detail in a meeting that was on the 22nd of January, 2016. And it was, I, well, I just thought it was like the biggest bombshell we've had in a long time. Certainly the, the smoking gun we were all looking for if we didn't need, we were, there were so many smoking guns, but this really was the smoking gun. And I was like, wow, this is finally here. Then two seconds later, I'm turning on the news media and everyone's like saying, oh, well, it could be a hoax. It could be that they're trying to catch the newspaper journalists or they're trying to, it's like a trap for them. And how do we know that it's the real thing? I'm like, well, it's the Guardian. It's Luke Harding. It's probably a very thought about piece. They probably got it from a very credible source. And why are we questioning it when it seems to fit in with the narrative that we have already proven has existed for so long? It's just a natural inclination of the mainstream media to just jump all over a story and destroy it before anyone's had a chance to, to even enjoy the fact that we finally have a smoking gun. Never mind to act on the fact that we have a smoking gun, because that's a pretty big deal. It is. You have, you, know, you have the Google Intel squad weighing in with expertise on and rather than just and actual uh, Intel professionals on, on Twitter voicing some skepticism. But yes, it does sound right. And so I, I prepared um, a prop to help yeah. us. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Here it goes. Okay. I didn't oh. write it back. OK, so this is what I call it. My reality bubble. Yeah. I, my voice is a little, my voice is a little scratchy, here. so, yeah. And then I'll do okay, that, good. and then there you go, there you go, now you can show okay, us. Okay, good. Okay. okay, so this is my reality bubble, <laughs> and then this is the story list. Right. And we're going to put facts and data in the reality bubble so that we can separate it from everybody's stories. Because <laughs> yeah, everyone yeah. has a lot of stories to tell about something that they are just reading in the news. Mm -hmm. So let's, this is not me being patronizing, this is me saying, we gotta boil everything down to real simple shit here, everyone. Yeah. Okay, so reality. Let's start with this question. Luke Harding is probably one of the longest reporters out of, he ran the Moscow Bureau Desk for The Guardian for years and years, and Steele was his big source before anybody's, he wrote about Litvinenko, he was close to that case. He knows the operations uh, inside and out of how Russia, Russian oligarchs, Russian mafia, Russian intelligence services 
work and don't work. Now, years ago, he did kind of get ensnared in that Snowden book thing and was like when before anyone was really figuring out what Snowden was. So the, we got to ask some questions, right? So first of all, this really is a black and white issue, okay? You're either in the camp of Luke Harding is some kind of nefarious, sinister character who's just weaving these fucking stories to, I don't know what, whatever. Or he has real sources and he knows his job well and he vetted this. because Not only him, two he's other gonna, journalists on the two byline. Two other journalists. This so. is the man who's been reporting out about organized crime in Russia in the former Soviet bloc for years and years. He's Basically. out of Russia by Putin because he's so That's, good. He's not so, messing around here. I feel like we could put some things in the reality bubble, but you guys might think it's a story. Is it reality or is it a story that Luke Harding knows how to do his job? I'd say Luke knows how to do his job. Plus, you've got uh, two other journalists who know how to do their jobs. Plus, the Guardian newspaper, which is a pretty darn good newspaper, doesn't get things wrong. I can't really think of too many times they've gotten things wrong. I'd say you've got a lot of credibility built in there. Okay, so Luke knows his job and sources. Everybody see that's reality. And the rest of it is just story shit. People yeah. making stuff up and giving their opinion. Okay. Right. All right, that goes in there. All right, so next. It's not the likelihood of this being a hoax in that someone is actually set up Luke and, and these story. other journalists. It's a story. It's just there's no ways that's possible. There's a way that's possible. But really, we were expecting the Putin team to be incredibly it, creative. That's a story. That's a story. It could be a true story. We could knock this out of the reality bubble if we get more information. Right. But right now, I think this is important. It's a, and who else do we hear that word hoax from when it comes to the Kremlin and what they have to say of what they know about Donald Trump? Hmm. You hear that from Donald Trump. So you let's do not do that, guys. That's we hoax is his it, term. Right? It really is his term. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, Reality bubble number two. This is okay. an important data point, the second data point. So we have this, we've had Craig Unger. Sorry, guys, it's so hot in California. I can't, I'm melting, even though the air It is, is also cold. hot in New York. So uh, it's uh, not that hot in Toronto, but it's I'm okay. Not. You are, uh, you look great, so don't worry about it. It's giving <laughs> you a glow. But if so. I, I got sweat everywhere, I saw it. It's just right, glow. So it's all good. It's glow. Okay. We know from Craig Unger. We know from Yuri Chavetz. We know from Luke Harding, from a Czechoslovakian source that he had. We know from Kodakovsky. Okay. We know from people that have been saying. Say the same thing, and I'm gonna guess all of those folks, and I think Dutch intelligence as well. I'm gonna say all of those different reporters or sources don't have the same person telling them the same story. I think they do all have different sources, and they're getting this sort of touch point of information. And what that information is, it's been coming out of them since it and the steel, Christopher Steele, we know it was in the steel dossier, is that there is disruption inside of the Russian mafia intelligence complex, I would call it that, and Vladimir Putin, that there are forces that want him out. It's it's not a symbiotic yep. relationship anymore. But yes, you're it right. never really is. But we know that there's been it started with the steel dossier. Then we got it from Kodakovsky when he went on BBC and he told them in 28, I think it was 2018 or 2019. We got it from Luke Harding separately in a separate thing, and we got it, I believe, from Dutch Intelligence, and we got it from Yuri Chavetz. Here on Narrative, he, he said this on Narrative yeah. to us. All these different sources, all having their own different sources within Russian intelligence services, all of them saying that there is a, there's a clashing and a rift right now between the gangsters, the oligarchs, the intelligence services even, behind Vladimir Putin and Putin himself. It's not a holistic, it's not everyone against Putin, but there is strife in there. So what does that tell us? That's in reality. It's not a monolith, LB. Yeah. It's not, everybody yeah. isn't in complete, total lockstep. Yeah. And no Putin doesn't way. make up everything. Like, I mean, Putin is a very powerful dude, but he's the head of a massive administration. And that's how he's powerful. Uh, he's you not know. WandaVision, for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, exactly. Making <laughs> his own reality, you know? <laughs> that's nice right. Good nice job. Line. Okay, so I shouldn't. I is, shouldn't cite. There more. is a rift. There is a rift, and so the fact that somebody that might be in that meeting or someone who had access to that document, I mean, I think the reporting was it was someone in that meeting, could possibly be going against Putin 
in order to leak this information out, it is that's a reality. Okay, mm -hmm. guys, that that possibility exists in reality. So everybody's saying, oh, they would never do this and they would never let it out. And blah, blah. It's that's still a little course. bit of a story, but it's also a reality. It's true that they're it's having a political reality. fight, but we don't right. know necessarily who may have the leaked story, it yet. The story would be that anyone outside, outside of Russia intelligence service and are active intelligence services. So now I'm not talking about retired people. When you're out, guys. Okay, so retired people that are on Twitter or on anywhere else saying, speaking as if they are somehow getting information from inside whatever intelligence agency they used to work for. I'm very skeptical of all of that. I'm just a skeptic of that. I, I just, I only know how sort of one place operates and I know that one place, when you're out, you're fucking out. And the second you walk out that door, you're retired or, or quit it, whatever your deal is. You don't get access um, to the information. It's top secret information. No. And not yeah. only that, is that it could change the moment you walk out the door. The information, everything you knew could have been changed by some new piece of information coming in that you don't have access to. So speaking with any authority on present day intelligence operations, unless you're speaking out from sources that are feeding it to you. And you I, I just mean anyone speaking that. Just be very skeptical of that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean people don't have expertise. Of course they have expertise. And of course they know their area and their region that they studied. And, and we're so grateful for people for sharing their expertise and sharing all that with us. But something like knowing the, the legitimacy of this document, if you've been out of whatever agency you served in for quite a while, I don't know. I, be skeptical. Yeah. Okay, so anyone outside of Russia intelligence services or our intelligence services, have it, that's, they're, they're, that's a story. They're just I've telling you I've got story. some things to add to your reality. Yeah, stuff. oh, good. Do, yeah. Uh, bring it on. I'm okay. going to write it down. You say. Okay, so there's three interesting things happened over these last, through this document. We learned, in fact, that it's not one document. We learned that there's several documents and people have to read yeah. this article. So there's basically three different documents that show up. And the first one was written by this guy, Vladimir Simonenko. I'm terrible with these Russian names. Now, he's the uh, senior yeah, official. He's in charge of Kremlin expertise. In other words, he briefs the president on important stuff. He wrote the initial document. It was a three-page summary that got to Vladimir Putin. Really wrote this thing, and that's what triggered these other this other document, and then finally this big meeting that happened on the 22nd. The second document was written by this guy, Alexander Manchosen, like something Manchosen. like that, who's the chief of foreign policy directorate for Putin. So he's also an important dude. He's the person who would bring such a meeting like this together, a National Security Council meeting like this together. So these are now two different things that I believe um, they've yeah. seen, which two documents which indicate that there's a series of, of things that happen that lead them to the National Security Council meeting on the 22nd. And then the meeting on that 22nd there is a pretty small little meeting. This is the National Security Council. It's not everybody in the world that's showing up there. It's basically the head of the intelligence of, uh, agencies, the yeah. FSB, the SVR, they had the foreign secretaries there, a few other famous people, the head of the defense ministries there, the kind of people you would want to make something like this operational. But people are saying, why would he have such a big meeting? It's not having a big yes. meeting. He's having a meeting with the yes. key people he needs to do to enact something like this. And next to Putin, Absolutely. there's Dmitry Medvedev, Absolutely. who's right, Medvedev, who mm -hmm. was the deputy PM. Next to him is Sergei Evgenovich Narishkin, who is the director of foreign intelligence services. Now, since September 2016, he's the head of the SVR. So he's the kind of guy oh, you want at there. That. Remember that there was a bunch of, of these guys that broke the sanctions to come and visit the Americans yes. in 2018? He's one of the guys who broke sanctions. So he's in an Obama sanction list. And somehow he's allowed to, to meet with the intelligence chiefs of the Americans. So he's also on the Obama sanction list. Not the kind of guy who would uh, not be motivated to, uh, to take action against the United States. And next to him is uh, Nikolai Patrushev who is now the head of the FSB, but back then he was something else. He was the head of the Security Council or whatever Security it was. Security Council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, He's the guy. He's the name we're hearing. Yeah. And yeah. By so we that is the name that Yuri Shvets actually said to us was the, the likely successor to Putin, the person who is going to be right. even more dangerous, even more scary than Putin, right. was Mr. Putrashev. Right. And so he's also... He was, got some reason to be there because he's now running the FSB and that would be an important thing to to run during an operation like this but also he's got his eyes out for Putin's job
Next to him is Lavrov, yeah, and, and then there's yeah. he, the then current head of the FSB, Brotnikov is there, and then the deputy secretary of the Security Council, who I don't know who that is. But on the other side, there's the head of the, the Duma. I think she's just a figurehead, really. But next to her is uh, Sergei Ivanov, who's Putin's chief of staff. Then it's the Ministry of Defense, Sergei Shogu, and who you'll remember, they needed the GRU to do a lot of this stuff. They needed to, to hack the DNC for example, yeah. and the GRU, we know, did that. Guess who the GRU sits under? It sits, under, sits under Shogu. Plus, we know that they needed to do a lot of this media manipulation stuff that they were doing, all these all these attacks on our information system, all this That's disinformation right. attacks. That was also conducted partly by the GRU, but also by the SVR, and I think also the FSB, but I'm, that would be strange, I think, if the FSB was involved in that. You'd have to correct me on which one of those agencies LB was actually doing the disinformation there. And then next to Shogu on the picture is the SVR chief, who was then the SVR chief, not currently. And then I don't know who Boris Grislov is. I think he's a famous Russian in every big meeting just to, to Mikhail bless it. Mikhail Fuckoff? Is that his name? Oh, Fradkov. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was Fuckoff. Sorry, my bad. They all seem to go to rhyme with off with fuck off. So it's just kind of what you want to tell them to do. But Can these we... be, you know, this is not like people are saying, why isn't Putin having, why would Putin have such a meeting? He pulls it out of his, he yeah. uses ESP. <laughs> he communicates by osmosis. Like, I mean. How do we know? 17 U.S. intelligence all, agencies also told us just several months after this, that yes, it was Russian intelligence services that hacked it to the DNC. Yes, it was Vladimir Putin at his order. So we know they were doing all of this. And if you think that there isn't a meeting in order to enact these things, yeah. I, it's a business. He's running his business of um, his, of his uh, mafia um, state, uh, right? I'll be, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't think this document, <laughs> these documents are um, there. They're okay. unverified. And, uh, I, I unverified want to say this, I want to say this they one. They can't be verified. <laughs> and you don't know what you're talking about because you ever worked in intelligence. I worked in intelligence. Let me tell you. Oh, really? You, um, oh, you know, no, I can tell by the typeface on the Cyrillic oh, there. Oh, no. Excuse me. Let me get my double check going. I'm not going to work on Oh, that's balance. fantastic. I love it. Are we allowed to make fun of the Russians in that picture, by the way? Can we do that for a second? Yeah. Go for it. Please do. That's what they're there for. What a bunch of incel dork losers these are. Look at these guys. What a bunch of fucking losers. Losers. That's right. all. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I mean, There's really. There's a lady in there. Too. There's got, one, like, lady. one lady in there, and here's what she's thinking: <laughs> Get me the fuck out of this room. That's her thought she's... bubble. Is my God? Uh... When is this meeting over so I can leave these horrible men? That's probably what's going through their mind. Like, it's like, is this guy sane? Like, they were going to attack the United States democracy, and he stole Donald Trump as the leader there. And really? Oh, they're excited. Look, oh, it, it, fuck it, off. It... Fuck around, and he's going to find <laughs> out. That's it. I, I just want to, here's the thing. All those people want to be there. They want to be doing what they're doing. Oh, Putin is only, we know he's only barely five feet tall. Lavrov could have just stepped on him and squashed him <laughs> at any time he wants and get rid of that little squashy bug. Okay. So the other thing I think that's important to put in the reality bubble, and this is what Craig Unger was saying today, and this is what people are collapsing. So I want to uncollapse it. This meeting is not, I don't believe that the reporting is saying or trying to pose it in any way, shape, or form that this meeting was the the aha mm. that Putin had and Russia intelligence right. services had of like, oh, we can use Donald Trump. No. Aha, who is he? We don't know him. And what Craig came, and this is another goes in the reality bubble. I'm sorry, everybody in the audience and everyone who sees this on the internet. This is in the reality bubble. You're going to have to deal with this reality. It has been confirmed 10 ways to Sunday in the reality bubble. You oh, see that? Nice. Trump, KGB, 1980. <laughs> Facts. Fact. No way. Fact. You heard it here Fact. first. <laughs> he Impossible. Was he was recruited by the KGB when Russia was still the, so when the Soviet Union was still intact in the right. 80s. Right. Nice. And it doesn't matter what that agency has become now, blah, 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 blah. They own him. They've owned him since the 80s. So he was there in their their fucketeer catalog of, of people they could <laughs> put their pin on and say, pull that fucker out and let's get yeah. that guy going for us. So it, it, that's he's a not mail what order this president. Was, he's a mail order president. Exactly. So don't think. Right. And he's been laundering their money on all their flight capital and working with all these private intelligence folks. It's just he's a nightmare. This guy that was our president, this meeting and this reporting is not saying that this meeting was the aha moment of, 
oh, maybe this guy is so stupid we can use him. They knew exactly who he was. Mm -hmm. If there were some things great thrown detail. out there, yeah. great detail, you know, if there were things thrown out there in that meeting that got written down, it's because they're noting, remember, he's this, he's this, because they were going to run a di an information op on us. We'd be very be thorough able. in collecting Being all the information they thorough. needed for an operation so everyone would Our know what they, what they were working on. Because they're working right. on an operation. It's That's so everyone right. needs to know. These ten people around this room, or how many they however many they are, need to know what they're gonna be doing. So they right. he's telling them, he's giving them the order. And he has right. to and sign the order because that's the way they do things. Otherwise, people can say, Well, I you didn't give us the order. So that's right. why he signs it. Now let's get the last we gotta get the last thing in the reality versus okay, just, So then there was someone that put out there who reads Russian and was like it said the comma wouldn't be there and the period wouldn't be here and these misspellings wouldn't be there. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. <laughs> when you're taking notes in a meeting like that, they're not going to be perfect. I don't think it went to the editorial desk where the grammar check person, and I don't okay, make sure that it was all the right. The Dostoevsky scholar read it over, LB. And right, made it. Pushkin right. made it into poetry. I understand. So that's also a story. It could be, that's an important detail and data point that no one ever writing who is a Russian native Russian speaker ever would write like this ever. I'm not seeing that though from others who say, no, these are just mistakes. Like you're just, this guy's just make, taking notes fast. And then it, it, so I don't, I know that there are people hung up on that one tweet that somebody sent out about that and using that to disenfranchise all this whole story. And I just want you to calm down as somebody who takes notes in big meetings and does writing. I'm telling you, it, I put commas in weird ass places too, and, and like in dashes. And, like, I don't know that's evidence, but I'm not discrediting it. I'm just saying that's in the story. It doesn't really go in the reality bubble yet. No, they'd be horrified <laughs> at that. But one of those guys, I think uh, the no guy I told you about, the guy who was the FSB guy who came to visit here was on the Obama sanctions list. He apparently plagiarized his entire doctorate. He's a doctor of something and he plagiarized <laughs> particularly. Let's get it okay. together. Here. So when yeah. we return, we're going to the document. We've got lots of other things to share. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone. Thanks for supporting the narrative podcast. Today's episode of the show is brought to you by Made In. If quality and craftsmanship is important to you, you should check out Made In. Made In is cookware and kitchenware brand that works with a renowned chefs and artisans to produce some of the world's best pots, pans, knives, and wine glasses. Made In produces professional quality cookware and knives for those who love to cook. They source their finest materials and partner with renowned craftsmen to make the premium kitchen tools available directly to you without the markup. Made In products are made to last and they offer a lifetime guarantee. Their cookware distributes heat evenly and can easily go from the stovetop to the oven in no time. And their knives are fully forged, perfectly balanced, and they stay sharp. They have 28,000 plus five-star reviews and their products are used by some of the world's best chefs at Michelin-starred restaurants around the world. Made In, better cookware for better meals. Right now, Made In is offering our listeners 15% off your first order with the promo code NARRATIVE, N-A-R-A-T-I-V. This is the best discount available anywhere online for Made In products. Go to madeincookware.com forward slash narrative, N-A-R-A-T-I-V, and use promo code NARRATIVE for 15% off your first order. That's madeincookware.com forward slash narrative. Use promo code narrative there you go welcome back everybody now you know how to spell narrative and where to put your right commas in, in russian documents by the way lb you're a believer in the oxford comma aren't you i think we've had this debate when you've vetted some of my Everyone stories is a believer in the oxford comma i don't know if i am <laughs> I'm the reason the oxford it, 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 the reason that it takes out the comma is because yeah. it's ap style to not have the oxford comma yeah and that's to save ink it's yes. to save money on printing newspapers, which doesn't even fucking happen anymore. Or tweets, so or tweets letters, and the characters in Twitter, they, you only get so many. Yeah. You know, you know, so you then maybe the you comma. have to do it, but yeah, it's, it's uh, not. Listen, a, I'm a screenwriter and a poet, and so everything's dots and dashes and weirdness, and I, I don't use subject and verbs. I'm actually the last person to ask, because whatever's going to get the emotion across for me, that's how I write, or the visual. I'm trained to write. So the, the actual document that they wrote, and this is the only piece of it we've seen. It's a little segment of it. I can read Russian and I don't understand Russian, but it looks like a, a pretty densely written uh, Russian document. It looks like a lot of other things. This seems to be page 18, which means it's or at least point 18. It seems like a lengthy document they put out. Now, the other interesting thing that came out in this document was this assessment of Donald Trump, that he's impulsive, mentally unstable, and unbalanced individual who suffers from an inferiority complex. So check, uh, check, they got it right. What, what, 
<laughs> What's Russian for duh? Yes, but yeah, this was January twenty <laughs> second in twenty sixteen. Yeah, we knew this. Then. We, we did we know it then? We knew this. We knew this. Yes, we did, and and they did. But yeah, we did. these are important notes. It, yeah. They are. You have to keep it fresh. Of like, what are we dealing with? What is our subject? How do we control him? What what kind of semantics are we going to push to him? What about him will sort of seal him to his followers? What can we work in there when it when they're pushing and creating propaganda? All of this is important stuff. Uh, and you know. why would the Russians put this, if this is a hoax document, just going down that theory of if it's a hoax document, why would the Russians put this in there? Like they would, it defeats their whole well, purpose. I mean, because it's something... they want to make it, it, so here's the argument for the hoax. The mm. argument for the hoax is that they're trying to trap journalists and trap us, mm. trap consumers of information, and folks are, are in the discourse and in the narrative into something that they can then prove was false because then that allows them to discredit everything. We're smart people now, and if there's stuff that's not quite right in here, okay, it does fine. It, yeah. it, doesn't, it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't erase the knowledge that we have in that reality bubble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. Facts are facts, well, that's the, yeah. and these are. This is true about Donald Trump today. It's true. It was true yeah. then, and they thought that in 2016 they must have had the knowledge of him that that existed prior to 2016, right. all the way to the 1980s.